malicious stuff into it, inject malware, and deliver it. So what will happen that you will have a supposedly secure website, and then you will have some malicious JavaScript that will come from inside, and it will go into your browser, it will go into the page, and it will basically have the same privileges as the entire website and the entire application. And at that point, the game is over, and there's nothing else that you can do um, to, to preserve your security. Now, um, on the screen here, you have the security warning that Firefox will give you unless, unless you've previously dismissed. For example, with Firefox, there's no way that you will ever be secure because there's no way for you to prevent insecure requests. I think some other browsers are better. For example, Google Chrome will not uh, submit insecure requests. Uh, Internet Explorer will ask you whether you want insecure requests to go through or not, in which case you, you should always say no. So in this particular case, um, Firefox is not really the, the best choice. And the, the one thing that is, that's really shameful is that at Firefox they've known about this problem for about six years now and there's a bug request uh, on their website on, in their bug uh, tracking system and they haven't done anything for six years to fix it because it supposedly it's too difficult. Anyway, um, this is my message for today. Um, I think that SSL is, a, is a one very rare, presents a very rare opportunity in the security space where things can be done on almost 100% secure. In most cases, it will take you a very, a very uh, a brief period of time to actually go and fix these things. And I'm saying is why not get this, this one thing right? So in many ways, I think in the, we in security space, we chase the, the latest, the coolest fashionable thing, something that interests us from a technical perspective. But I think we need to go back to basics and focus on the, our basic building blocks of security and try to get them right. Only by building a secure foundation of, of proper these security blocks is that we can uh, actually improve security overall. And that's um, all I have for today. And I think we have a few minutes for some, some uh, questions. Yes, sir. Uh, it should be in your, uh, so the question is about secure cookies and how, is, uh, how do you make cookies secure. It should be, there should be a feature in your programming library. When you're creating a cookie, there's a flag that you need to set on it and say, I want to make this cookie secure. If you're, making, uh, if you're creating a cookie directly, by crea directly creating the, the response header, you just need to append a semicolon and the word secure at the end. And that's all you need to do. Um, I, I think the argument in most, case, most, most cases is performance, but there, there, are two, there are really two issues. One issue is that uh, there can only be one secure website per IP address, and that's, that's the technical limitations. Um, internet, most browsers support, there's a, there's a feature that allows virtual hosting for SSL, and most browsers support it. Internet Explorer on Windows XP does not support it, and because of it, the internet still is, is we are still forced to use one IP address per SSL website. So that's a huge issue. If, you, if we wanted to take all the 300 million websites today and make them secure, we would need to have 300 million new IP addresses, which is difficult to find and imagine all the administrative overhead that, 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 that is there. The other issue is performance, and the issue of performance always comes up with, with SSL. There's no doubt that using SSL uh, results in a slightly uh, worse performance. And uh, there are two aspects to it. One aspect is the increased latency. Whereas when you open a normal communication channel, it's usually three packets that are exchanged. With SSL, there's an there's a SSL handshake that has to be performed with every, co every connection, and it's a slightly more involved. The other, uh, so there's that added latency, which the, the, the penalty is noticeable or can be noticeable. Um, the other is, if you have a very large company with hundreds of servers, although the uh, performance overhead of SSL is not that big, if you, have, if you only have hundreds of web servers, 
you will notice the, the other performance of SSL. Uh, it's very um, uh, uh, it's very nice to see the, the, the big companies, even the big companies actually making a push for SSL. Um, uh, for example, even Google has uh, made available uh, the, the secure search facility where you can now go and actually submit your search over SSL. And if they're doing it, I'm guessing that everyone else is eventually going to do it as well. The question uh, was, uh, why is that most, uh, some sites insist of remaining plain text and not using SSL throughout? My view is that entire internet uh, should be SSL only or pr protected in, um, uh, in any way that, uh, that that's necessary. And we shouldn't really have any plain text websites at all. And that's, that's going to be the only way that's going to make us truly tr tr secure. So if you type, if you type mybank.com in your browser, the browser will submit a non-SSL request first. If you are in an insecure environment and there's a man in the middle, he will take that request and potentially hijack, and, uh, because the browser will open the page. So the attacker will potentially hijack that first page. And at that point, he's controlling you, your experience completely. And so when you click on the login button, which usually there is a login button on the banking website, it, the, uh, the attacker may see a link for the secure website, but he may rewrite it and keep you on, in, on an insecure path. Or he can, uh, he can take you to a diff completely different website, which will be secure, but it will be a side day control, and he will proxy all your requests to your banking website. So he will have full access to your internet account. If you have a secure bookmark, the first page it will open will be the secure web page, which the attacker cannot compromise. But if you write HTTPS in the beginning of the URL? If you write HTTPS, and if you remember to write HTTPS every single time, then, then, then you're fine. But I was not able to do that. You know, I, I, I clicked enter, and then I realized, oh, yes, I, I, I didn't do that. And it's really boring and uh, difficult to do that every time, to, to live. In, in this environment where you're afraid of what, what, is, it, what is everything that can, the bad, bad that can happen to you. It, I mean, it really gets to, gets to you after, after a while. I think we've run out of time. Uh, thank you very much for being here and 